Massachusetts, I welcome you to our recorded service on this Sunday, August 23rd, 2020. This morning, Pastor Jeff will be offering the sermon, and our worship service will proceed as follows. The opening hymn is, God is Good. We then have a time of prayer, another hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus. The scripture lesson this morning is 1 John chapter 4, verses 11 through 21. The title of the sermon is, How Do We Love God? And our closing hymn is, I Love You, Lord. I invite you to focus and quiet your hearts as we enter into this time of worship. May the Spirit of the living God unite us together as we come into his presence. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 through 3. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. It has yet to happen, and 
yet, because we hope and believe, we know it will happen. As we move forward, we continue to pray for the leaders of our nation, for the leaders around the world, medical leaders committed to studying and finding the virus. We ask that you speed them along and empower them with your wisdom and your light. We pray for leaders of government, leaders of communities, leaders within the workforce, that policies and legislation would reflect true justice, and that it would be in a spirit of healing and uniting always. For we all are stressed and we are all struggling to know and to understand how to live through this pandemic. So we ask your wisdom and your love and grace to guide our leaders and to guide our lives. With thanksgiving, we present our petitions to you. I want to just cite some of the prayers that we've been sharing within this church family. We praise you that Irene's family, Aunt Janie and Uncle William in South Carolina continue to improve in their recovery from COVID. We praise you that Warren's mother, Anne, as she heals following her broken shoulder and surgery, that her needs are being met as the family steps up and demonstrates love to her. We are also thankful also that Warren's brother, Peter, having experienced a heart attack surgery, is now showing signs of improving. We praise you for that healing as we continue to ask for the sustaining strength. Helen has reported that a neighbor has experienced a personal trial and tribulation, and at the same time, they appear to be on a path of health and healing. So we commit this person into your care as well. We pray for Elaine's whole entire family, and especially for Elaine and her health, that she would be strengthened and restored. We continue to pray for Joan's nephew, Tyler, who needs a kidney transplant. We pray and are thankful that George, while he has had his ups and downs, that he continues to undergo treatment of recovery, both from his COVID and the symptoms, but also from his stroke. We celebrate that Chuck is doing well in physical therapy, that Eleanor is on a path of health and gaining strength. We pray for Meg's sister, Alice, that she would be healed as she has now been diagnosed and is being treated for a treatable cancer. We pray for Dory, Peggy's daughter, who's coming close to the end of her chemotherapy. We pray for complete healing and remission. We continue to pray for Sandy's Wally as he undergoes treatment. We also pray that our elite elders, Ruth in Virginia, Jenny at Scott House, and Marion in Harbor House, would know your grace and your blessing as you abide with them and give them the strength and encouragement every day. We continue to pray for Paula and her whole entire family. Your hand is written upon them to give them strength and guidance. May you continue to empower their lives as they move forward. We offer these petitions with thanksgiving as we are confident that the God that we worship, the God that we offer our prayers to, the God that we bring a word to at this time, hears our prayers and always answers. For that gift of love and care, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our scripture lesson is taken from the first John, chapter 4, verses 11 through 21. Here are the reading of God's word. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they are in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And this is how love is made like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment and the one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God and yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. May the Lord add a blessing to this, the reading of Scripture. Gary, praise the Lord. You know, this pandemic has affected us in so many different ways, and I think oftentimes that in the midst of our problems, we have to pray more and more and more. I was at Tremont Temple years ago. I worked with a Pastor Denton Lotz, who used to always say, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. And somehow that got ingrained in me, and I really feel that uh, prayer is so important. That's one of the things I think uh, I will always remember about him. I remember a lot of people that have been godly in my life who have impressed upon me the love of God, how much he loves us. And that's what I want to talk to you about this, this afternoon, is the love of God. How do we love God? How do we love God? In the midst of the pandemic, and we know that there are almost 9,000 people who have died in Massachusetts already, God never meant to bring human beings into this world to cause and inflict a lot of suffering because God is a God of love. He never meant for all this. We have what's called a devil, and he rebelled against God and all of his demonic forces and all of that, that's what's responsible. And we need to remember that God loves us. God's love is enormous. So let's think for a moment. Let's think together. God loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And so we need to first think about this love and get it on track. His love, first of all, is unconditional. That means that there is nothing that will make him love you any more than he already does love you. He loves us. That word is agape. C.S. Lewis used to talk about that. Agape love. That's an unconditional love. Another way that God loves us is that his love is eternal. It's unchanging. It's everlasting. He's always going to love us. Praise the Lord. He never stops loving us, no matter what. Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. And he's unchanging. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3, the Bible says, I, the Lord, do not change. Another way that God loves us is 
His love is divine. It's holy. It's pure. It's true. It's unselfish. It's a sacrificial love. He really does love you and me. So that brings me to how should we love God? How do we really love God? Have you ever thought about that? The first thing we should do is recognize. Recognize the great love that God already has for us. Even when we're going through tough times, it's important to recognize God still loves you. There's nothing that goes without his notice. Think for a minute of someone in your own life who showed you love and kindness and generosity and patience and altruism and caring. And then multiply that times a hundred and it still won't come close to how much God loves you. Amen. So we first look to God with this incredible love for us and we, out of our thanksgiving and gratitude, the spirit of thanks, we show him and we tell him that we love him. That's how we show it. We express it in thanksgiving. The Bible tells us that God is real. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Hebrews 11, verse 6. God's love is for real. In the book, The Cross of Christ, John Stott writes, But God, in giving his son, gave himself to die for his enemies. He gave everything for those who deserve nothing from him. And that is God's own proof that his love toward us. That's his proof of his love towards us. Romans 5.5 5 is one of my very favorite verses. That God poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Praise God. So first of all, we recognize God's love and we recognize it with gratitude and thanksgiving. Secondly, we demonstrate our love for Almighty God by becoming vessels through which God can use us to be a blessing and show his love for other people. Remember, love isn't just something you say. Love is something that you do. It's an action. And God loves it when we are conduits and vessels through which he can pour out his love for someone else. John 13, verse 34 says, A new commandment I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And when you love someone, you think in terms of what is good for them. Don't try to make them fit into your box. Love them where they're at. Care about their needs. Care about their good qualities and help them. And be enthusiastic about it. People can tell when you're faking. They can tell, but when you really mean it and you really love from your heart, God is glorified and the other person is blessed and God will bless you, praise the Lord. The Bible says, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. John 14 says, if you love me, you will obey my command, what I command, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. That's the Holy Spirit. We have to also remember that we can't do it without God's help. Sometimes it's really, really hard to love people you know they can't stand you. It's difficult. But the Holy Spirit will give us the ability. What did Jesus do? He demonstrated it on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was able to forgive. Can you forgive? And thirdly, we love God with an attitude, we show that we love God with an attitude of determination to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. Our heart involves our emotions, our feelings, compassions, and tenderness. Our soul involves our spirit and commitment and our inner being. And our mind, with all of our mind, it involves our intellect and our mental capacity and imagination and understanding and all of our concentration and judgments. True love demands abandonment of self to God. And God alone is our incentive. 
In her book, A Chance to Die, Elizabeth Elliot talks about the missionary Amy Carmichael from Ireland who gave her whole life to be a mother to hundreds of Indian, poor Indian women in India in the early 1900s for many, many years. She never got married. She lived there and she fought for them. She was determined to show the love of God to these women who had nobody to advocate for them. In Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis writes, God made us, invented us as a man invents an engine. A car is made to run on petrol and it would not run properly on anything else. Now God designed the human machine to run on himself, on himself. He himself is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn or the food our spirits were designed to feed upon. There is no other. Amen. It involves total commitment to the ways of God. And total commitment can take on many kinds of features. Sometimes total commitment and loving God means forgiveness. It means acts of humility. It means displaying acts of kindness. You can love one another through missions. You can love somebody through prayer, praying for them, intercessory prayer. You can love someone through ministries, Bible study, outreach, other events, food pantry, prayer meetings, offering rides, shopping for someone. There's so many ways, a phone call, a card. But do it in love, in sincere love. And at the same time, we have to be aware that there are obstacles. One obstacle to loving God is idolatry, putting other things, more material things, as more important than God, or pride, or getting caught up in our own sense of self-importance. That's idolatry, that's selfish, and that has no place in God's kingdom. In his book, Loving God, Chuck Colson talks about the, the world value system of fame, success, materialism, and celebrity, and he says that uh, we sometimes want to emulate the best known preachers and the biggest sanctuaries and the grandest edifices. The heresy at the root is the most dangerous message that's preached today. And what is it? It's the what's in it for me gospel. Many of us are so caught up in what, it, what can I get out of this that we're not thinking about loving God. So I want to sum this up. We can love God the way we love God and should love God is to recognize His enormous love for us. It's unconditional. His love is eternal. His love is unchanging. His love is divine and holy and sacred. And we need to recognize that and thank Him. Thank Him in a tangible way. By number two, demonstrating His love through us toward other people. And three, by determining within our own spirit that we're going to love him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. Remember something. Love is not what you say. It's what you do. And we need to fight against pride and idolatry and selfishness. There's a song that says, Jesus paid it all. I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Why is loving God so important? When we want to spend time worrying about our situation? Because number one, God created you. God loves you with an everlasting love. And he wants to be loved. He's going to watch over us. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. He cares for you more than anyone else or anything else in this universe. God's love is eternal. And he says, I know your deeds in Revelation the third chapter. You're neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were either one or the other. We should love God. Because if we're lukewarm and we don't really love him passionately, the Bible says in the 16th verse, I will spew you out. If you're only lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. I don't want him spitting me out. I want us to 
grow in our love for God. The songwriter said, And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still repeat, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we just ask your blessings on your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you, Lord. Thank you.